episode of the Assembly Lines podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Today is 3-14-15, Pi Day, and in honor of Pi Day, I thought I would show you how to use the Merlin linker, and we'll run the sample program that's included in the Merlin 8 disk and to calculate the value of Pi out to a thousand digits. So let's get started. So in Merlin 8, the linker uh, consists of several pieces. So first there's an actual file that contains the name of the routines to be linked together. And then you have one or more uh, source code files which need to get assembled. So for this example, we're trying to compute pi uh, with the pi algorithm written by Glenn Braden, uh, who is also the author of the Merlin uh, assembler. And this consists of five programs. So you can see they all start with pi dot something. And so it's pi dot start, which is kind of the um, main program. And then there's um, pi.main, which contains the actual subroutine to compute pi. And then a few helper routines. There's also a file consisting of macros. So that's the t.pi.max. And then finally, the actual uh, linker file. So this is called pi.names. Let's take a look at the pi.names file. And to do this, we'll hit R for read text file. And we'll put a slash in front to force Merlin to not prepend uh, t dot, uh, which it normally does for a text file. And the pi.names is the file that the linker uses. And what it consists of is just a list of all of the programs that need to be included in the final uh, program. Okay, so here's the pi.start program. And this program sets up the initial menu uh, choices for the uh, pi calculation program and then calls the actual uh, pi.main. So the first thing in here is uh, the rel pseudoop code and this just forces Merlin to create relocatable code and you have to do this if you're using the linker so that the linker can then assemble all of the code together at the uh, chosen address. Okay, the next thing after this is this keyboard kbd pseudoop code and what this does is when you assemble the program it'll actually then present a uh, question during assembly and you input either a 0 or a 1 and this allows you to do conditional uh, assembly. So you can see if you enter a 1 then it'll go ahead and use the disk DSK to actually assemble the code straight to a file. If you enter 0 when it asks you the question then it will assemble to the screen instead. So this is just a nice way at assembly time to uh, give the user a choice. Okay, after that we have three variables and or three labels and a print ring error and z string and these are marked with the pseudoop code ext for external and so this indicates that these three come from an external file and you can use these labels then in within this routine um, but the linker then or the assembler uh, knows that these are going to be coming from another file. Uh, finally there's uh, one more uh, pseudoop code here, the use use, and this just says to include uh, pi.max at this location. Um, and pi.max is just a uh, uh, another program with a bunch of macros that are used later on in the program. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and assemble all our object code and then link it together. So first I'll assemble the pi.start. It's going to ask me whether I want to save to disk or just assemble to the screen. I'll tell it to save the disk and it'll go ahead and uh, assemble it. We'll see all the assembly here. It's also saving out the disk uh, every time it fills up the buffer. Okay, so now we have everything assembled. You can see that we have pi.start, main, look, div, and add. And one point when I tried to assemble the pi.add, I actually got an error about a file not found and it took a little bit of digging, but there was a put uh, sudo opcode near the bottom of pi.add that was including the uh, send message text file. So I had to go ahead and copy that over from the uh, Merlin 8 original copy. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and invoke the linker to link all our files together. The first thing we'll do is erase any programs uh, to provide space. And then we'll go ahead and use the link command. And we'll give it the starting address 
uh, where we want the uh, program to start. And this will be 81C. And I got this from the Merlin 8 manual. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything magic about this location, but that's what it said. And then we'll give it the name of our um, file that contains all of the names of the object files. So that's pi.names. And it'll go ahead and read in each of the files within pi.names. Uh, it'll read in the object code, uh, append it to the program, and then produce a final output. And you can see there's all our addresses, and there was no errors. So now we can go to the main menu. We can hit O to save, and we'll call it Apple Pie. Okay, and once it's saved, we should be able to quit out of Merlin. And let's just make sure everything is there. Uh, and let's try B run Apple Pie. Okay, so here we are. Here's our program. Um, we'll, uh, let's just test it out real quick. We'll tell it uh, this. Let's see, what is it asking? How many 11 character columns? Say three. Uh, video screen, no initialization string, yes. Uh, let's just do 20 decimal places. And there it is. And let's repeat it again. And we'll do three. And video screen, yes. And now we'll tell it to do a thousand decimal places. And we'll go ahead and time it. Okay, so here we go. We'll start our timer and the program at the same time. Okay, so there it is. It's done. And interestingly enough, it took 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Uh, 3.14. I swear that was uh, just an accident. So there's all the first 1,000 digits of pi. So we learned how to create relocatable object files and how to link them together into a larger program. And we also learned how fast it takes the Apple II to compute pi to a thousand digits. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and go off and have some apple pie.